please be seated. Good afternoon. Welcome to the Diploma Awarding Ceremony of the Department of Special Education, and Language and Literacy at the College of New Jersey. My name is Dr. Shri Rao and I'm the co-chair of the department. Dr. Strassman, our other co-chair, is not able to be here today, but she shares in our pride and celebration. It's truly an honor to lead the department commencement ceremony for such a distinguished group of students. On behalf of the department, I offer our heartiest congratulations to each of the graduates, their families, and friends gathered here today. A commencement ceremony celebrates not just the culmination of a journey one has completed, but one that's also soon to begin. As we stand at this memorable juncture, we recall not too long ago when many of you began as students in our program. Some of you were first semester freshmen, tentative and excited about college. Some of you were entering TCNJ as graduate students and some of you were already teaching but coming back to school again. Your intellectual curiosity, your willingness to challenge assumptions, your openness to new discoveries in learning, and your love for teaching have left an indelible impression on our minds and hearts. In particular, we'll treasure our many conversations with you once that made a long drive home fly by, or once we had after you taught a lesson and with pride witnessed your students experience the aha moment. Throughout your journey in the program, each of you has demonstrated immense professionalism and a strong commitment to reflection in action you are not only leaving with an academic degree or certificate, you are leaving with the mindset and capacity to make a profound difference in the lives of children in and outside of New Jersey. A little advice as you begin with your new journey. Being in college or graduate school nurtures idealism. Sometimes being in the real world tempers that idealism. Don't let the park testing or the politics of the educational system daunt you. Always and always presume competence in yourself and the students you serve. Take good care of yourself and enjoy and be present in each moment in the classroom, including those that are challenging. And finally, do come and visit us or send us a note on your accomplishments, such as when you win the Teacher of the Year Award in your district. No pressure at all. Congratulations again and enjoy this beautiful day. Now it's my pleasure to introduce the platform. Sitting to my left is Dr. Matt Hall, Professor Melanie Phillips, Dr. Kathy Rotter, Dr. Ann Peel, Dr. Solange Lopes Murphy, Dr. Yi Kang Wu, and Professor Michelle Sharash. And sitting to my right is Dr. Jeff Pass, Dean of the School of Education, Dr. Sarah Dumaya, 
Dr. Nadia Panksafar, Doc, Dr. Alan Cohen, Dr. Jerry Petroff, and Dr. Amy Dow. I would like to now invite Dean Pass to offer his congratulations. Good afternoon, and congratulations. Um, I am so thankful as, an elementary, as a former elementary school teacher for reading specialists, for special educators, for specialists in teaching students who have hearing deficits, so thankful for specialists who can work with English language learners because I knew as an elementary school teacher there was no way I could do it by myself. And that's just thinking about the folks in the school. Well, the folks that I work most directly with. There were the librarians and the secretaries and the administrators that I really needed to do my job well. And then outside of the school there were all kinds of other folks and I didn't really know about that until I started doing sharing time with my elementary students. For those of you who are unfamiliar with sharing time, it's what used to be called show and tell. Or as Lucy in the comic strip Peanuts called it, bring and lie. <laughs> show and tell evolved into sharing because teachers rightly said, we don't want kids bringing all this stuff to school, but we wanted them to stand up in front of a group and speak. So lots of students chose to do that, and they loved having an audience. Uh, I was one of those kinds of students. I appreciated that. But when the students started speaking, they started discussing their lives. And I began to appreciate some of the challenges that they faced in merely being a student. They would talk about how my, there's divorce in the family, and I'd be thankful that there are mental health professionals to help families deal with divorce and separation. And the students would tell how social workers brought warm clothing to them in the wintertime, and I was thankful that we had a social welfare agency to take care of that. And some of the students would talk about having to travel on the bus to go to the library to get an encyclopedia to do their homework. And I didn't appreciate it. I guess I should stop now and explain, to define a few terms. Encyclopedia is like a 20-volume book <laughs> And library is, no, no. Uh, I'm really thankful that we have buses and public libraries and public hospitals and all of the public services that make my job easier because it keeps our students healthy and it allows them to thrive and to come to school ready to learn. And I'm telling you this because as professionals, it's your responsibility to support those folks who are fighting for children. This is a voting year. Everybody's been talking about it. And next year is a gubernatorial election. As you start thinking about your responsibilities outside the classroom, and you're thinking about voting, or you're thinking about getting involved in some political activities, which I hope you'll do, because people look to educators for leadership. I want you to look at the records of the candidates to see who has supported children. You know, it's organizations, policy groups that make these decisions, that decide whether to have a special education program or decide whether to provide additional funding for all of these things that we think are important. Someone's making those decisions. Someone's fighting against those decisions. Look into who's on our side so that you can exercise some leadership because you can't do it by yourself. You need the help of all of those people. The old saying, it takes a village to raise a child. It most certainly does. And we teachers who try and do it ourselves burn out. We depend on all those other folks working with us, forming alliances. So today, it's about you. But even you sitting here today know that you couldn't have done it by yourself in getting your degrees. All of the folks sitting here 
in the audience helped contribute to your success. And certainly these remarkable people alongside me on the stage have contributed to your success. So today's about you, but tomorrow's about the children. And I look forward to you leading in the TCNJ tradition in creating the kind of public school system that we can be proud of. Congratulations. Thank you, Dean Pass. It's now my privilege to call upon April Bullock and Aliki Socritus, students in our five-year special education dual certification program, who will offer congratulations on behalf of all of us. Nearly 1,727 days ago, the students in the five-year programs officially started their TCNJ journey. During that time, we have completed about 40 different courses throughout 10 semesters. We have found homes in at least eight different schools through our various practicum and student teaching experiences. During these five years, we have demonstrated immense dedication, hard work, and commitment to ultimately arrive at this one very special day. In reflecting upon these numbers and experiences, I began thinking about how our journey can be measured in time and in distance. Our professors have measured this time by observing our transition from students to teachers. Our families have measured it by counting as the days have quickly amounted into years. As students, we have measured the time through our intellectual growth and development each semester. While much of our learning has occurred inside the walls of our TCNJ classrooms, a significant amount has also occurred within the field. As a deaf education major, I know that our cohort has often measured our trajectory to graduation day in terms of distance traveled to schools to observe and to teach. I am sure that all graduates here can agree we have covered a lot of miles. In doing the math for my own experiences, the number is nearly 12,300. In order to cover all of those miles, we were often required to rise just before the sun. However, those early mornings were then balanced by the opportunity to watch the sun rise. When we embarked on this educational journey, our own sun was just rising above the horizon and our mileage counters were set at zero. Over these years, we have been able to cover unimaginable distances with tremendous support. So I would like to thank our professors, faculty, and staff, cooperating teachers and mentors, friends, families, and loved ones here both physically and in spirit. You have provided us guidance and encouragement. You have helped us measure the time and have watched as we have traveled new distances. You have allowed us to shine as bright as the sun, and it is because of you that we have been able to reach this point in our journey, so thank you. Our time and experiences at TCNJ are coming to a close and our sun is setting. But as much as sunsets signify endings, they also preface a new beginning. Looking into the audience at my fellow graduates, I see a group of determined individuals prepared to travel great distances in the next part of their lives, whether it be as classroom teachers, in administrative positions, and even in the fields of law, science, and genetics. The final sunset certainly signifies the end of a chapter, but not of our book. So in considering the ways in which a journey can be measured, in time and in distance, I have certainly found answers. It can be measured in days and in years, in classes and in semesters. A journey can be measured in miles covered and the sunrises and sunsets viewed along the way. But from this day forward, I feel that the greatest measurement will be the number of young lives we will have the opportunity to positively influence and the number of students we will be able to educate as a result of our TCNJ education. Our journey together may end at this road but I have confidence that the class of 2016 will continue to go the distance. Congratulations. I would now like to invite Aliki Socrates to offer her congratulations.
Distinguished faculty, friends, families, and fellow members of the class of 2016, congratulations, we finally did it. A commencement speech on education graduation most often centers on the importance of the teaching profession and usually includes, and usually includes a powerful quote that exemplifies the power a teacher can have on enriching the daily lives of children. However, I want to disclose a more realistic outlook on the profession and focus on what it genuinely means to be a teacher today. We are all entering teaching at a troubled time. Teachers are universally praised as the solution to our education problems and simultaneously condemned as the root cause of all that's wrong with our schools. State governments further place a substantial amount of pressure on teachers to demonstrate student progress on standardized tests. Additionally, I'm sorry to say to my fellow classmates, we have to be prepared to fail. I know each and every one of us here strives for perfection in every lesson we plan. However, a lesson we slave over will flop, and our understanding of a student's problem may be way off base. This will happen not once, not twice, but throughout our entire careers. Thus, it is essential that we reflect on what it means to be a teacher and why we signed up for this in the first place. And let's face it, we didn't decide to enter the teaching profession for the money or the benefits. Maybe the summer's off. But the truth is, we all decided to be teachers because we love. We love children. We love helping others. We love what we do. Yes, we inspire, we motivate, and we take on the multifaceted role of a parent, a doctor, a counselor, anything and everything for our students. But in the end, it is all out of love. This love isn't some abstract concept, but something tangible that we felt over and over during our time here. We felt it late nights in the library, working together to prepare for exams and group projects. We felt it during practicums and student teaching, sharing ideas, venting to one another, talking about our students as if they were our own kids. A few years from now, we might not remember the names of Piaget's stages of cognitive development, but what we will remember are moments of pure, simple love. So like everything else we've learned here, this love is something that shouldn't just be remembered, but something that we should constantly carry with us. When we enter the world of teaching and are faced with barriers and obstacles that make us question why we do what we do, I assure you that our mission to serve education will be fulfilled because we love what we do. Think about the journey you have taken to get here and the infinite amount of love you still have to give to your students and everything you do in and out of the classroom. Thank you again, and congratulations. Thank you, April and Aliki. And now, it's time to acknowledge the accomplishments of this amazing graduating group. The effectiveness of an educational program is reflected in the quality of the students it graduates. We take immense pride in our students' accomplishments and the fact that throughout their professional lives, they will represent our department, the School of Education and the College of New Jersey. It's my pleasure to announce a few highlights of the accomplishments of this distinguished group of graduates. Brianne Verhoog and Rebecca Havens worked for the past year on a complex research initiative spearheaded by the New Jersey Commission for the Blind and Visually Impaired. They co-authored a report with Dr. Petrov and presented it at a stakeholders meeting. John Nally, Diane Yanacone, Nicole Sheridan, and Nick, Nick, Nick Shade have held integral positions supporting the two summer high school transition programs that are held at TCNJ in partnership with the New Jersey Commission for the Blind and Visually Impairment, Impaired. Their commitment, passion, and evolved leadership have been invaluable over the years. Elizabeth Mykotovich was the president of the Students for Disability Awareness Club for the year 2014-2015. She was also an academic, social, and residential mentor for the CCS program. Samantha Altman, 
Adam Ziering, Sarah Colonia went overseas to South Africa for their student teaching. <laughs> Christina Markel and Kerry Hannon did their student teaching in Italy. <laughs> Catherine Basley went to Portugal and Spain to take graduate courses in the global program. Eva Giacobo is going to be a public interest scholar at Villanova Law School. <laughs> Mackenzie Mosera will attend the University of Michigan's MS in Genetic Counseling and MPH in Health Behavior and Health Education, where she can further her love of science and commitment to deaf children and their families. Leanne D. Pamphilis has been accepted to a doctoral program. <laughs> Alyssa Mangle spent a year working with Dr. Pank so far on a research project. She laid the foundation for the study that Drs. Pank so far and Petrov are continuing now. Alex Lewis is a co-author on a manuscript with Drs. Panksofa and Petrov titled Father-Friendly Classrooms, Making a Space for Dads of Children with Disabilities. This manuscript is currently being revised to be submitted to the journal Teaching Exceptional Children. <laughs> Gorky Chika, Elizabeth Soma, and Nicole Charbonneau received their district's Teacher of the Year Award. <laughs> Elizabeth Soma also received the Melvin H. Kreps Middle School Governor's Educator of the Year Award. <laughs> and finally, several graduates from this group already have job offers. <laughs> Please join me in giving another final round of applause for this distinguished group. And now it's time for the student awards. It's time to present our department awards and congratulate our students who are graduating with ac academic distinction. The department has several awards that are presented to students in recognition of their academic work and excellence in practice. I would now like to invite Dr. Amy Dell to announce our department awards and the coordinators and faculty members to hand out the awards. Thank you, Dr. Rao. These awards are all listed in your program. So I'd like to start with the Deaf and Hard of Hearing Award for Excellence in Practice. Uh, this award is given to students who have demonstrated consistent growth in teaching, knowledge, and skill, a commitment to the continuum of educational placements needed by the diversity of deaf or hard of hearing students, and demonstrated professionalism. Would Kimberly Caston and Stuart Pace please come up to the podium? Oh, they're not here? Oh, okay. Uh, Kimberly and Stuart were not able to be here today, so we will mail them their awards. Okay. Uh, the next award is for students in the Reading Specialist Program. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, this award is given to two outstanding students uh, who have completed the Reading Specialist Award. It's called the Award for Excellence in Practice. Would Laura McGill and Elizabeth Sommer please come to the podium? Thank you. 
And Dr. Matthew Hall, coordinator of the Reading Specialist Program, is presenting the award. Will Michelle Rogoff please come to the podium? Michelle, the faculty in special education selected you to receive this award for excellence in practice. Congratulations. Now would Diane Anacone and Alyssa Mango please come to the podium. The faculty in special education have chosen you for the award for excellence in scholarship for all that you have done. Will Nicholas Shade, Brianne Verhoog, and Elizabeth Mikatowicz please come to the podium? We are pleased to present to you the Special Education Award for Excellence in Service for all that you have done on behalf of children with disabilities. Ava Giacobo, will you please come to the podium? Ava is receiving the Special Education Award for Excellence in Leadership. And when she finishes law school, we expect great things out of her in the area of educational leadership. Steve Kukar, would you come to the podium? Steve, the special education faculty would like to present to you the Ann Schenkel Award for Excellence in Strategy Instruction. And this award is given in honor of a past faculty member in special ed, Dr. Ann Schenkel, uh, who was one of the most energetic, creative, and passionate professors here at TCNJ. She adored teaching and was thrilled when her students were able to use what they had learned from her. So we give this award to students who have demonstrated excellence in the use of strategy instruction. Oh, we're done with special ed, yeah. Okay. Now we move to uh, the award in teaching English as a second language. This is an award for excellence in practice. Dr. Wu, who's coordinator of this program, will present the awards. Would Grace Boswell, Emily Corrigan, Lauren Keener, and Solangel Nunez please come to the podium? This year we have a new award. Uh, it's linked to our new dyslexia initiative at the college led by Dr. Kathy Rotter. Nicole Haas, would you please come to the podium? And Dr. Rotter will present this award. And our last but certainly not least uh, award is, is basically an announcement. Uh, this department is very, very proud that uh, we have three special education 
no, I'm sorry, two special education and one deaf education graduate student who has been nominated for the highest award in the state of New Jersey in teaching. And it is the New Jersey Commissioner of Education Distinguished Student Teacher Award. We don't know yet who's going to win. That's going to be announced uh, next month in June. But Catherine Basley, April Bullock, and Aliki Socrates have each been nominated for this award. Thank you, Dr. Dell. And now it's time to present the diplomas. Graduates, when your program is announced, please stand and line up near the platform. When your name is called, walk across the platform to receive your diploma and our congratulations. After receiving your diploma, continue walking across the platform and return to your seat, but remain standing. Okay? Right. okay. Education of the Deaf and Hard of Hearing, Master of Arts in Teaching. April. Okay. They lined up? Okay. April Bullock. Mackenzie Mozera. Erin Dest. Leanne DePamphlis. Thank you, and you may be seated now. The Reading Specialist, Master of Education. Cynthia Antunis. Rebecca Crawford. Jamie Foote. Uh -oh. Nicole Charbonneau. Alison Karpovich. Emily Bassett. Laura McGill. Tara McGinnis. Elizabeth Soma. Jamie Taylor. Kara Zahorsky. Please join me in another round of applause for these candidates. And now for the Teaching English as a Second Language Master of Education. Stephanie Kramer. John Hurley. <laughs> Ms. 
Emily Corrigan. Elizabeth Friedis. Maida Race Coat. Dana Herrera. Brenda Livingston. <laughs> Laura Palumbo. Erica Beebe. Lucilla De Leon, Solangel Nunes, Grace Boswell. Elisa Diamante. <laughs> Irina Dimitrenko. <laughs> Kathy Eichert. Please join me in another round of applause for these candidates. Education, Master of Education. Okay. Special Education, Master of Education graduates. Rachel Johnston. Cynthia Darby. Congratulations. Steffi Joseph. Congratulations. Christina Maloney. Amy Bram. <laughs> Michelle Flood. <laughs> Congratulations. Kelly Lynn Bowser. Please join me again for another round of applause for these candidates. And now for the Special Education Master of Arts in Teaching.
Jessica Chalupa. <laughs> Terry Mohasi. Alicia Obst. Michael Stevenson. Brittany Karpovich. Devon Paradise. And Catherine Baisley. Please join me again for another round of applause for these graduates. And now for the Special Education Master of Arts in Teaching five-year program. <laughs> Amanda Hamlin. <laughs> Morgan Rapetto. Brianne Verhoog. Bridget Byrne. Megan Joy Katska. Dana Joy Carducci. Rebecca Havens. <laughs> Kelly Mara Conboy. <laughs> Catherine Mary Karovich. <laughs> Ava Giacobo. Jennifer Zish. <laughs> Megan Quinn. <laughs> Samantha Altman. <laughs> Sarah Colonia. Emily Weissman. Nicole Haas. Nicole Sheridan. Yasmin Bird. Aliki Socrates. <laughs> Michelle Rogoff. Christine Kristen Melle. <laughs> 
Caitlin Coluccio. Steve Sukar. Brittany Santos. Victoria Vanoni. Alexandra Cullen. Adam Zeering. Amanda Victoria Lina. Alex Lewis. Diane Iana Cohn. Nick Shade. Terry Hannon. Elizabeth Makotovich. Alyssa Mango. Anna Pollock. Caitlin Vashuta. Gladys Vu. Morgan Gerber. Christina Markel. And John Nally. Please join me in a final round of applause for this wonderful group of graduates. Be seated. And now for the finale. It's my absolute pleasure to introduce Dr. Alan Cohen, Professor Emeritus, as well as a graduate of TCNJ. Dr. Cohen will lead our grand finale. Uh, th thank you. Uh, we have something special for you, but we have to invite some students back on the, on the podium. So I'd like all the students from the five-year program in Deaf and Hard of Hearing to come join me up here on the program, and all the students from the special education five-year program. Please come up here and stand on either side of the podium. Come on. Go ahead.
Come on, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> Who's going to face us? Oh, you're going to face us? Yeah. Don't worry. <laughs> okay. That was a logistical maneuver that we just about made it through. Okay. There is a, there's a song which, in a special sense, can be interpreted as the words of a teacher and, in a later verse, as the words of a student with special needs. I believe that these words are worth reflecting upon. I believe the children are our future. Teach them well and let them lead the way. Show them all the beauty they possess inside. Give them a sense of pride to make it easier. Let the children's laughter remind us how we used to be. And later in the song, possibly from a student with special needs. I decided long ago never to walk in anyone's shadow. If I fail, if I succeed, at least I'll live as I believe. No matter what they take from me, they can't take away my dignity. And so on behalf of the Department of Special Education, Language and Literacy, here are the words to this song in a very special language.
Congratulations to all of you and to your fa families. And we're going to process now. And if you could just do that again for us. Well, Amy, do you have something else to say? Oh, whoops. No, we're done. <laughs>
Congratulations once again. Enjoy this absolutely beautiful day and make sure you have the refreshments that are outside.